our dear viewers and listeners. We greet you all in the wonderful and precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Today is the day the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to today's Bible study. And before we get into the Word of God, I would request you to invite others to join with you so that we have this wonderful moment of fellowship. And as we begin this session, let's dedicate this moment to God in prayer. Let's pray. Precious Lord, we thank you. Yes, Lord. We are reminded of your love for us, the unfailing, unconditional love. Yes, Lord. Today we have come to say thank you yes, Lord. for everything you did for us at Calvary. Yes, Lord. We are grateful, Heavenly Father. Yes, Lord. Have your way in us. Yes, Lord. Open our eyes to understand mm. the price that was paid for us, mm. that we may live fully cognizant Mm. of the work ahead of us yes. that by your grace heavenly father yes we shall run this race Amen. to its accomplishment mm. to the glory of our lord and savior mm. jesus christ amen 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 so we will take today's reading from the book of revelation chapter 22 and we shall read two verses verse 8 and verse 9 and before i we get into reading the actual Verses. I want to remind us about the context of where we are coming from. We have established that our Lord is coming back. And it is only a matter of time. So the question is, for us who are on this side of time, as we await his coming, what is it that we must do? What is expected of us? In this time, or putting it another way, how are we to live in light of our Lord's coming? And for that, we will look at today's text and pick the principles that need to guide us on how we are to live. So, with that understanding, can we get into? Verse 8 and verse 9 of chapter 22. And let's read. The Bible says, Now I, John, saw so and heard these things. And when I heard, when I and so, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel who showed me the things. Then he said to me, Nangamba, say that you do not do that. Labanti topo labot you. For I am a fellow servant. Kubanga and dimudumuno. And of your brethren the prophets. Ero womu kubaganda bobanab. And of those who keep the words of this book. Naba bakwata ne bakume bigambo biechita bochino. Worship God. Sinza katonda. We are drawing to the close of this wonderful chapter. And John brings us two very important facts here. Two very important principles. One is as a result of what he's actually saying. The other is a rebuke to him for what he did 
that brings us the principle. The first one is the principle of bearing testimony. What John brings to us is what he has seen and what he has heard. And he now establishes this testimony as his testimony. And he begins by saying, I, John. In other words, he's saying, I am the one who saw the things. What I bring to you is a personal testimony of what I have both seen and heard. You see, in light of the revelation of Jesus Christ, we saw the testimony of the angel last week. Now John crowns it up with his personal testimony. And he's telling the church, and he's speaking to us, he's saying what I am bringing to you. I am bringing to you what I have seen. And what I have heard. This is my personal testimony. Concerning the person of Jesus Christ. I believe. Or we believe. That every genuine follower of Jesus Christ. Has received a personal revelation. Of who he is. In light of his life. In light of his work. In that by work I mean his his death and resurrection. And that should be made manifest in his life today. So when we walk on this earth, we are witnesses to the truth of who Christ is. Yesterday I happened to be somewhere with someone. And here she asked me a question. She's asked and said, Pastor, is heaven for real? And he's saying, what if we die and there is no heaven? I say that cannot be. He said, why? I say because of Jesus Christ. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. And says, if it were not so, I would have told you. Jesus is the redeemer. Yes, he died and rose from the dead. And he, he went to prepare a place for us. And he said, I will come again and get you to where I am. So that where I am, you shall be also. How wonderful. And John now brings us that revelation of how this place looks like. When he paints the picture of the Jerusalem coming down. So your experience may not be as ap apocalyptic as what is being unveiled in the book of Revelation. But you have a personal revelation of who Jesus is. The person of Jesus Christ. And how you relate to him. And the wonderful things he has done in your life. And that testimony is not a private matter. That testimony is a public matter. 
wakutegeza bantu bonna Jesus tells us in the book of Acts Yesu atugamba mstabo che bikola ga bantu you shall receive power Timwe munawe bwa amani After that the Holy Spirit has come upon you Omwe mtu kubwali balo kubaka In other words when the Holy Spirit comes Timwe mtu kubwana ja He shall empower you Aja kuba wa amani and empower you to bear witness of me O kujulira kuye So weak men we saw in the Bible kati abasajja abana petrola mu Bible people who ran away when the Messiah was captured bana abaduka nebekweka mukaba kwa kwatwa him like Peter abamwega nanga Peter and said i don't know you nogam oyo simumanyi when the holy spirit came upon them ayo we mtuvu yamalo kubakako they stood on the day of pentecost nebai milia kuna kula pentecost and 3000 souls came to the lord e myo yo 10000 nejije ni mukama wa subsequently we saw thousands upon thousands coming to the lord mama so ngatula be 10000 ne 10000 sije ni mukama wa today all over the world there are billions coming to the lord e ro munsi zonna tuli mu buwumbi bujje ni mukama wa why ne right because of the move of the holy spirit in empowering believers or wo mugendo gwe omutukuvu ogwe omutukuvu okuwa amanyi eri abakiriza to bear testimony but walo kujulirwo to witness of what they have seen but juli nebo gere kwebe bebala bye and what they have heard nebe bamazo kuulira concerning the person of Jesus Christ ebi kwatagala ku Yesu Kristo salvation is not a religion bana obuloko zisi dini salvation is a relationship obuloko zinkola gana when god When man sinned, omuntu wayenona, God's solution was not a religion. Katonde cho kudamu eri abantu yaba wa dini. No, nedda. When man sinned, omuntu wayenona, the Bible says for God so loved the world. Bible tuna kwati katonda bwayagaleza. That he sent his only begotten son. Na wayo mwana wo muyeka. That was always that believes in him. Bonna ba mukiriza. Shall not perish but have eternal life. Te babu lo bate baziki ne ba belinda obulamu obuta. Solution to a sinful world. Katonde cho kudamu cha wese ya yuno. Is the person of Jesus Christ. Okubawa omuntu ye Yesu Kristo. God's solution to the sin of humanity. Katonde cho kudamu cha wese chibichi aba. Is not sin therapy. Taba wa kudabiriza chibi. It is Jesus Christ. Aba wa Yesu Kristo. Who is the sacrifice for sin nga yesadake yaweba yo rwechb god solution to your sin and mine echo kudamu katona cha ku eri hb cho necha is the cross of calvary we musala be calvaryo last week week eri as we were closing nga tuumba umba the festive season ebirobye ganda on good friday oba kunoku there were a lot of these images all over television and social media e bi fala bi ba de committee mbagano wonna of people carrying the crosses ngaba to reach the misalaba and they call it the way of the cross baji ta kutambula mu kubo lyo musalaba and when you look at what is happening nego wete gereza byo nego here is a form wano wali we mfana na ye chintu but it lacks the right approach na ye nkole ntufu ebula because the relationship is what is missing kubanga enkola gano be enkola gane yo to jira ba mu it is the relationship with jesus christ na yo kubanga enkola gana ne yesu christo it is not you following a cross around a village all the town tambula goberere omusalaba yo naje bagutwala no nedda it is the heart ensonge no ya mutima believing in what Jesus Christ did and covered okukiriza Yesu byakole kalvaliyo and receiving the benefit of why he died on the cross ne wetu ali ne ebikulu ebyafiri no twa kusala that changes your life tremendously ebi byebichusiza dalo mu and your life now becomes a testimony obulambo kati ne bufuko your life now begins to bear witness obulambo ne butandiko kujulira of the resurrected Jesus ngabutegeza So you who was once dead when we are you of have now been made alive with Jesus Christ o fully do mulambu wa mune Yesu Christ because he did not just die Yesu te afabu fi he rose from the dead ya maliriza azuki do kuva mba life forever more kati mulamu emirembe jonda when we shall see him we tunamulaba we shall see him in glory tunamulabira muchitiba and that is intimidating to sinners e chochi 
Because when we see him, he comes in majesty and glory. He comes as a judge. He comes to destroy everything that evil represents. That is the testimony. John says, I, John, am he who had and saw these things. For those that believe in Jesus Christ, I need to ask you a question. What have you heard? from the word of God. What have you witnessed about what you have heard? What is it you have seen? What are you witnessing concerning the life that changed? And that life is you. Praise be to God. You don't have to have a, a very wonderful story. It may not be very dramatic. But there are two distinguishing things. This is who I was. By the grace of God, I am what I am. That's what the world needs to hear. Praise be to God. John, having seen everything that he saw, was overwhelmed. Verse 8 B and to 9. Says when he heard and saw this, when things, he fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who showed him all this. He's in awe of what he has seen. He's in awe of the journey that he has taken. He's in awe of the church glorious. The people with God dwelling in their midst. Glittering and glorious. It is beyond description. Every event that has passed has left him in awe. And the Bible says he fell down at the feet of the angel. And the angel said, you shall not that. Says you cannot do that. It doesn't matter how glorious the event. When it comes to the matter of worship, it is only God that must be worshipped. The angel says, I am a fellow servant. Like the prophets before. In other words, our message is to reveal the will of God. Like John reveals the will of God concerning the end time. Concerning the revelation of Jesus Christ. He says the prophets are similarly servants. Because they are revealing the will of God. And therefore none of them mm, needs to be washed. This reoccurs what we have seen in the word of God. When Paul addresses the church in Asia Minor, which is the church in Colossae, chapter 2 and verse 18, he says, let no one disqualify you. Insisting on self-abasement. And worshipping of angels. Taking his stand on visions. Puffed up without reason. By his senseless mind. You see, the church in Colossae. 
was intent on worshiping angels giving reference to what should only be given to God worship should only have one audience and that audience is God two Things are revealed here. Number one, it demonstrates to us that apostles are not above error. Here is John. He has received such wonderful revelation. But that does not this Pre-qualify him to be above error. He has already made an error and the angel has corrected him. You see, we live in an era where men have exalted themselves and they seem to believe that they are above error. Yet in Doing the same, they are actually in error. They are whole religions that believe that their leaders are infallible. Institutions that believe that those that help them are infallible in doctrine. And yet they are following the writings of people like John. And Peter. Peter. And Paul. And all of these. But now when you read the text, you discover one thing. They are not above error. Nabo Basovia. But what is important is we are all striving to be perfect. Sometimes we may miss it. But we need to come back to that place of fellowship. To that place where we lean on the Holy Spirit. To that place where we lean on the everlasting arm of the word of God. That it illuminates our paths. That it guides us on this narrow way of life. The second thing we understand is that angels are not above worship. We have a very sharp rebuke by the angel Malaika to John. He tells him, You must not do that. I am a fellow servant with you. I may be more knowledgeable. I may know things that you do not know now. But that does not qualify me to be the object of your worship. You say, we live in an urgent time because of the offices that we have, because of the responsibilities that God has graciously given to us. We want people to bow down. That is unacceptable. Here we see it loud and clear. The Bible says, the angel tells him that we are to keep to take a look at the words of this book. And we saw that last week. The word keep means to guard. To guard against those that may dilute this message. And he says you need to worship God. Proskuneu is the word. Greek word which means bow down. In adoration. Why? Because angels 
And angels is the word angelos, which means messengers. Sometimes we mistaken the, mes the sender with the messenger. So we end up worshipping the messenger. Instead of receiving the message from the messenger and worship the one that sent it. Why? Because angels, the Bible tells us there are two kinds. It tells us about angels who are servants of God. And, the, and we see that in Daniel chapter 7 and verse 10. Where Daniel reveals to us Daniel thousand thousands ministering to the ancient of days. We have in the book of Hebrews another set of angels who are the servants to men. And the Bible tells us, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth for the sake of those who are to obtain salvation. And that is in Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 14. Basically, all the way back we see angels associated with revealing the will of God. Acts of the Apostles chapter 7. The Bible tells us in verse 53 that the Jews received the law by the direction of angels. And this is affirmed by the book of Hebrews chapter 2. Verse 2 and 3. The Bible says if the word spoken through angels proved steadfast and every transgression and disobedience received a just reward. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? Listen to that message. The key message I want to drive here is that God has always sent messengers to reveal his word. To reveal his will. And Peter says, and he warns, and he says, God did not spare the angels who sinned but cast them into hell and delivered them into the chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment. <laughs> so, you see, let me explain this. Being Commissioned by God to execute a task does not exempt you if you disobey from the punishment or the judgment of God. So you may ask, what is the big deal about worship? <laughs> Why is worship such a big deal? You see, for you to understand this, you need to go all the way to the book of Exodus to understand why this whole issue of worship is important. <clears throat> what it means is when you exhort anything or anyone and do to them what is only reserved for God. That is worship. And in essence, that is what we call idolatry. Now, idolatry is a very sensitive word. That I've even had preachers. And you are turning between if you are going to preach on a message on idolatry. 
na ofuno obuzibu oba mpulje ku njiri yo kusinze bifana you will fall in one of three categories oja kugwa mu bintu bine bisatu number 1 ekisoka you may decide oyinzo okusala to look at your own life we kube muto chigwe and where you come short ulabe wota to kidide and then you bring that message no it no it is our back of it is that is what i call the simple path el chenjite ekube eliyangu you may decide to look at what is happening in the congregation that god has given you oversight over oyinzo okwetegereza aba hbinda katonda cha kuwa doku suma and then use that as the message no bakoze sango bubaka again that i call the simple path er ale kubo ni italiangu but there is the hard part where you allow the holy spirit to guide you on what you mean by the word adore and what worship is all about and allow him to guide you through the text and bring that personal revelation to you on what idolatry and worship is all about that is the hard part and that is the path that many people don't want to take let's have a look at the harder path i'll give you a text for example exodus chapter 20 if we pick it up from verse 3 to verse 6 as we have a glimpse on what idolatry is all about this is what the scripture says god commands the children of israel through moses and he says you shall not have no other gods before me you shall not make for yourself a carved image any likeness of anything in heaven above all that is in the earth beneath, all that is in the water under the earth you shall not bow down to them nor serve them for I the Lord your God am a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate you but but showing mercy to thousands to those who love me and keep my commandments let me break down that for a moment we see the first commandment and the second commandment where God forbids certain things. The first one he forbids is the worship of any other God who is not here. But in the second commandment we see something else. We see the forbidding of worshiping the true God in a false manner. Now let me break it down again. Overall what we see here is God denouncing idolatry and make no mistake he says when you do that you hate him so idolatry God looks at it as hate directed towards his person but what does it entail it entails basically three things number one he says you shall not make idols you shall not make idols he says you shall not make for yourself an idol in any form 
So he's saying it does not matter what you come up with. It does not matter whether you're, you're saying when you do this, then it helps you to do this. I, I have heard people and I've encountered people who say, no, when I, I make this and put it here, it helps me focus and therefore worship God. God says no. God is spirit. And it's Jesus tells us those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So you cannot worship him while having an idol before you. The idol will take the place of the invisible God. Because he is invisible. Then your worship must be done in spirit. And in truth. And the Bible goes on to tell us. He released so many things, creatures in heaven. On earth and under the earth. And some people have broken it down to say those in heaven refer to the spiritual forces. Uh, and they have said, try to say those, that is where people worship all forms of spirits. Uh, people, when it comes to earth, they worship matter and everything that is created therein. I have watched several documentaries where people say Mother Earth and I'm asking myself what are we talking about here? You see, if we are not careful with what is happening, we end up doing idolatry. We make idols. Some people use values to make idols. They use culture to make idols. They use tangible things like the phone to make idols. And the Bible says you shall not make anything in heaven on earth or under the earth and under the earth can be a lot of things some people out of death the fear of death make idols of so many things so they end up doing things to try and remediate or soothe their mind concerning death some people come up with ceremonies others come up with practices and all that if we are not careful it mounts to idolatry you see no matter what is represented it comes down to one thing that in every area of the universe whether material, spiritual, whether it is something strange beyond what you understand, it should not take the place of God in your life. Never represent the Creator by anything created. That is the fundamental rule. Number two, he says, You shall not bow down to them, to worship them. So it is not just making it. It is all it also involves worshiping or bowing down to them. The third aspect is the aspect of serving them. Let's first deal with the one of worshiping them. It's, you see, making them is one thing. 
worshiping them is another. So for some, they are not actually worshiping them, but they are making them. So making them is idolatry. <laughs> so worshiping them is also idolatry. Then serving them is the third one, which is also idolatry. So first make, then worship, then serve. So anywhere along that route, it amounts to idolatry. You see, when it comes to us today, in our sophistication, there are so many things we can that can become idols in our lives. It, it, it can be as simple as a hobby. But, and it is something you're, you're literally bound to. You, you just don't feel your life is complete without it. So for some of us, if just your phone went away from you for one Day. 24 hours. You could feel like you've lost something. You are literally grieving. May I submit you? That could be an idea. It is not something you have made. Somebody has made it for you. But you are now bowing down to it. You have bowed down to it. You have allowed it to become God in your life. So, worshiping of the living and true God is the engaging of God and engaging him on the terms that he proposes and in the way that he alone makes possible. Let, let me say it again. When we talk about worship, the true and living God. It means you are engaging him on terms that he proposes and in a way that he alone makes possible. You say you cannot watch God unless you are worshipping him in spirit and truth. So, you cannot worship him in spirit and in truth except when the Holy Spirit aids you. To so, you cannot worship him any other way except through the person of Jesus Christ. So, there is no way you are going to approach him there is no song that can soothe him. There is nothing you can do. There is no chance that will bring him down. You see, God is not our servant. We are his servants. And that needs to be very clear. So, the third thing which I talked about is when you are thinking God is here to serve you, that God who is your servant is not the one we are talking about. Here. The one that is your servant is the one that you have made. And my dear, that is idolatry. Hope the message sinks in. Let's go, let's proceed. So, this admonition does not end with John. It comes to us today. 
It comes as a message for us to understand because we face too many pressures. There are so many temptations today to grab and believe one form of a dietary or another. You see, when we talk about idolatry, <laughs> it is simply to worship or to make something more important all equal to God. And, and those idols, I say, are many. Even money can be an idol in one sense. Because the people who will do anything for money. Money has become their God. Sex. Can become a god. Today we have an entire industry that is day by day getting so many people into it. And the whole establishment is to get men and women to worship sex. People can be an idol. It's so amazing today that you have popular shows that have the word idol. American idol. And valuable time. No, why you would watching idols. You see, when, when you want, you're watching your favorite footballer. You even boast about it. Ah, that one is my idol. Seriously. You see, when we don't allow certain words to hold the weight. And you simply throw them around. If we are not careful, we get entrapped. Because the world has decided that these words no longer shock us. So soon it becomes a part of us. And then somebody asks you, who is your idol? And then you begin to list the one, two, three, four, and in football it is one, so in what it is one, so when it comes to the economics it's one, so seriously those are too many idols. So you see when you don't allow people to use their idols, God in all this? Basically you are not any different from a Hindu. Because they have so many gods. And the scripture is very clear. That you shall not have any gods but other than me. You see, the world tells us that financial security will fulfill you. But it cannot fulfill. It cannot satisfy. You see, the word tells you that this is your body. You can do whatever you want with it. But that's not the truth. You are not your own. You are purchased to the price. You need to honor. You must honor God with your body. You see, the word will tell you that you will be happy. If people like what you do, Jesus says, What will it profit a man? Yes, after you have gained this whole world, and you lose your soul. It is possible for the world to clap for you. And your soul is lost for all eternity. So we need to heed to this admonition. Worship God. Give unto the Lord all what is due to Him. The glory. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. That's what Psalm 29 verse 2 tells us. It tells us also in Psalms, oh come, let's bow down and worship Him. 
Let us kneel down before our Lord and Maker. We are not to bow down to people. We are not to kneel down before them. We are called to bow down before the Lord. We are called to kneel before our Lord and Maker. Do you remember the Lord Jesus? When the devil was tempting him. The Bible says he took him up. Showed him all the land. All the countries. All the glory there. And I say, if you will do what? If you will only bow down and worship. I will give all this to you. What does he say? All I need to do is give me one act. Bow down. And then all this is yours. And how does Jesus respond? He says, You shall worship the Lord your God. And only Him shall you worship. Only Him shall you worship. What does it mean? See, I want you to see something here. He doesn't say, Wash God when you choose to do so. No, he doesn't say, Worship God if he wants to do so. Say, no, you shall worship the Lord your God. In other words, you must worship God. It is a command. We shall worship God. So here we glean two things that we must do. Between now and when our Lord shows up. Number one, testify of what we have heard and what we have seen. And number two, worship God. I'm going now to pray. For those that have never received Jesus Christ. As your personal Lord and Savior. You may have worshipped everything. You may have worshipped yourself. But you need this relationship. You are lost. Without him. Why don't you say this prayer? Surrender to Jesus. Christ. And worship the Lord God. With all your heart. With all your soul. With all your mind. That everything within you does one thing. Worship the Lord. Let's make this prayer. Say, God of heaven, creator of the universe, you who knows every heart, you who understands every mind, you who understands every purpose, I am a sinner. I need a savior in my life. Lord, I believe that Jesus is the savior of the world. Yes, And that he died to save every wretch like you. Therefore, King of God, I surrender. Ne Jordi, I believe in the resurrection of the dead. Brought about by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And therefore, Lord Jesus, I invite you now, as the Savior and the Lord of my life. Change me, Lord, on Tuesday, that my life will bear witness of you. Change me, Lord. I will worship you from this day forward. The way you want to be worshipped. And my life will glorify you every step of the way. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, 
If you have made that prayer, you have been wonderfully saved. There is a phone on the screen. I want you to call that number. Somebody will pick it up. And will guide you on the first steps. In this wonderful journey, where you will testify of Christ, but more so where you will worship God. So from Dominion, we are saying, God richly bless you. Have a wonderful time. So till we meet again, we say, Shalom.